I want to welcome everybody who has managed to join us uh, this morning, this afternoon, this evening, and depending where you're connecting from. If you have, if you have not yet met and you don't know, my name is uh, uh, Henry Moyo, and I love supporting people who are motivated to Im uh, improve their self uh, image. And I'm also motivated to help people remove some negative and inaccurate beliefs and behaviors from your life so that you can start an experience and become confident and have that become that confident vision of your yourself so i'm a business person myself an entrepreneur and i've been in doing businesses for quite some years and i've been in the corporate world for so many years as well risen through the ranks and uh, having been in so many uh, different organizations i'm an it professional with a bs in computer science a master's in business administration those are things that i have started now I'm also a coach certified uh, coach with the John C. Maxwell team. I think we all know John C. Maxwell is one of the leaders, great leaders in uh, personal development, in leadership development. He's the guru. He's the one I'm partnering with, learning from him and also being mentored by him uh, to be a great uh, leader myself. So guys, if you've got any questions during this, uh, during our time together, please feel free to ask the questions, post them. I will be willing and being able also to come back to you and to respond to any of the questions that at least you might um, have. So why are we having this topic today? What is the importance of self-image? Whether we realize it or not, how we view ourselves defines so many aspects of our lives and daily uh, interactions at any given time. Our situation presents us with an opportunity to manifest whatever beliefs about ourselves we hold. So it's important to start at the very beginning when seeking to address and improve our self-image. So becoming aware of how you define yourself is the first important uh, step to improve it. So in, so in uh, placing focus on cultivating this awareness before moving forward is a good place for you to, to start from. So sometimes uh, some of the questions you might have or considering becoming aware of your current state of self worth, what are your current beliefs surround your self worth? Why do you have that? What is it that you believe about yourself? How do you feel um, this could Im improve or what you think and feel about yourself? So we, you need to look at that as well. What are the limiting beliefs in your life? One way that people fall into cycles of negative self-worth is by maintaining what I'm consider limiting uh, beliefs. So these beliefs can be regarding anything uh, like your job, your family or relationship, etc. And and um, and also the more you accept them, the more they become your reality. So the more you keep on believing what you believe about yourself, it ends up becoming true about you. So a simplified uh, maybe example I can give for this would be maybe ways uh, taking the same route to work simply because, well, you have never tried a different way. So sometimes you become so much comfortable in doing some things. Like uh, when I look at the way that I've been driving, taking my kids from home to school, uh, to work and everything, I've been just using one route because that was the easy and simple route for me to do. But when I started challenging myself, started changing. In fact, when I actually saw, um, there was a time I went on to Google and I saw my route. It was, it was just like a small little T that, hey, I'm moving from here, from home to work, pick my kids, drop my kids, work, home, work, home, school, and something like that. So it was a small little line. And then one day there's a little line where I go to church. And I said, hang on, this is a boring life. And I started now trying to use different routes, trying to adventure, trying to go to so many places, go out for a weekend, just have fun out there as well. So what happens then when you're forced maybe to take a detour one day and realize, hey, there's been another quicker and easier route than what you've been doing all the time. So it changes the way you view your whole commute, the way you've been traveling. It challenges the limiting belief that was held in place that, um, the one that uh, kept you spending too much time on your daily travel. And breaking out of these beliefs can be unsettling experience. And many people choose not uh, to work in order to avoid this um, uh, discomfort. So many people would rather stay in, in their situations than to get out of, um, to get into, into a situation where they're not comfortable. So playing small, 
does not help you. Learn to love you. You must learn to love you. So I've got this quote here. It says, our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightening about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. This is a powerful quote by uh, Miriam Williamson. I know most of people attribute this quote to Nelson Mandela and uh, many people attribute to Nelson Mandela, but it was originally by Miriam Williamson. So our deepest fear is that we are more powerful beyond measure. Stop being afraid of the success that at least you can have. You're not the only one. All of us, many people have gone through that route, but they made a decision to go over those fears that they have. This is my all-time favorite quote for encouraging a more positive self-image. You are more powerful beyond measure. A huge element of having poor self-image is, is, is the belief that hey, we are not good enough but good enough for what exactly? Why do you say you're not good enough? Why are you judging and comparing yourself with others? Be yourself. By belittling our achievements, shrugging off compliments or resisting things that we know make us feel good, we remove ourselves further and further from our authenticity. So we shrink the part of us that is trying to go beyond sin and fault and uh, turn into a uh, mini sorry, a uh, ministerial version of what could be if they given the right amount of energy. This, result in, this results in damaged self-image, poor self-worth and negative thought patterns, which do nothing but keep us stuck there. So things to ask maybe yourself um, when you're feeling uh, this happening to you as well, who are you not to shine? Who are you not to shine? Why not shine? What is good enough? How do you define your understanding of good enough? Are you trying, uh, who are you trying to impress? Most of the time, want to try and impress others. So to maximize the benefits of this work, uh, I would love it if you could maybe take a pen and paper and take some time to answer some of these questions honestly about yourself. You can share some of what you find with the group or with, uh, you can pause them, whatever, this is entirely optional. Uh, this is a uh, personal work or you can, you can do it yourself. I mean, share it with the other people as well. But one thing I know is the more you share it, it's gonna help you to change. So what does success mean to you? What does success mean to you? This is another one of the major questions to ask yourself when you feel yourself starting to compare your life to others. Comparison is the thief of joy. Comparison is the thief of joy. Is this another quote, you know, to remember in times like this and simply serves to remind us that we have no one to impress but ourselves. Compete with yourself. Compete with yourself. Where are you today better than what you were yesterday. Those are the things that you need to look at and see how are you changing, how are you improving? So what is success to you? What would it take for you to feel like successful? In life and why have you formed that belief? Well, whether it's financial, emotional, uh, circumstantial, uh, family or something else entirely uh, the society we live in has conditioned us to form beliefs surrounding these areas of our life. And it can be so difficult to break out of these cycles and realize our beliefs are not the only way to perceive them. So everyone defines success uh, differently and something which really helps us improve our self-image is by quietly defining what that is for us and aiming for that instead of trying to impress or serve or emulate anyone else's definition. So be yourself, define what is success to you. You know, you need to know what, 
what exactly you mean by success yourself and live by that. Don't try to emulate somebody and say, hey, maybe if I drive the latest Lamborghini, then I'm successful. For somebody, success might be just putting your kid through school, through university. For somebody, success might be just having that decent meal that at least you really want to have. For somebody, success is having financial freedom. You define what is success to you and you go out there and make it happen. So letting go of our past experiences, some of the challenges that at least maybe affect your self-image as well. So it says, uh, what we feed our minds shapes our perceptions and our perceptions shape our reality. This is an amazing quote by Advent Katok. Self-image is formed through a repeated thoughts, cycles, and behaviors. By allowing past experiences, maybe both good and bad, to be part of our current reality, we're in fact still living in the past. This is one thing many people do not realize. What you keep on thinking about the past, whether it's good or bad, and also about the future. So the more we cling to these experiences or labels and definitions of ourselves, the more we reinforce them. The thoughts we feed are the ones that grow right. So this is what I mean by saying uh, that we must understand our current beliefs first before we can hope to change them. If you are not sure, then I really encourage you to dig a little bit deeper and, uh, and what causes your poor self-image. When was the first time you remember thinking a negative thought towards yourself? Where and how did that situation come about? How can you avoid such situations in the future? So again, it's necessary to share your response, your response to some of these questions. And if you don't feel comfortable doing so, but take the time to consider um, uh, your, your responses as well. Some of them, I mean, what are your core beliefs? So in order to get to the bottom of any self-image issues or even just deeper, a deep, uh, deepen your understanding of them, it's important to lay out and clarify your core beliefs. Core beliefs are the things that, uh, that we know to be true for ourselves. Things that are irrelevant to anyone or anything else around us. Things that make us feel aligned and filled with purpose, contentment, and fulfillment. This can be things as simple as maybe, well, I know that I like to maybe work out. I know that I like to drink coffee before I work, you know, these are some of the simple things that at least you can have, or they can get a little bit deeper and um, include maybe your, your, your vocational belief to say, I have an, an, um, an inner desire to travel, meet new people. Well, I believe my purpose is to teach and share knowledge, or I thrive on communicating with others and creating connections. So what are your beliefs? Core beliefs can be simple, single words or concepts, or they can be larger ideas that, uh, that involve others and assets you place in the world. So take a look at the list, maybe um, some of the things at least you might have as part of your, your, your core beliefs as well. So one thing I want you to understand is um, there's, there's a big impact on, uh, on repeated action. So neuroscientists study, uh, I mean, the responses and reactions and uh, neural tendencies of our brains. And it's very clear from what they see that um, repeated actions and repeated thoughts result in our brain developing a new neural uh, pathways. This means that our thoughts literally have the power to change the way our brains work. So in terms of self-image, the more we tell ourselves something and reaffirm it, the more rooted in our minds it becomes. So this is why negative beliefs about ourselves become so damaging. So what might start as a, a vague comment or skewed perception becomes strengthened uh, and, and the more and more we think about it. So the more energy you give a thought, the more it builds and strengthens. Our thoughts are just like muscles. So the more we think about it, it, it develops a stronghold in ourselves. Just the way when you go to the gym and you keep on exercising, you develop muscle. So it's the same way these thoughts 
develop as well. So the most difficult part of all this is to realize your habits and behavioral patterns. It's, it's breaking out of them and taking that first step and shifting the thought pattern from the damaging one towards a more fulfilling and strengthening direction is where the biggest challenge lies. So there are quite a number of articles you can read about uh, with some scientific evidence on uh, changing your brain uh, through repeated action and behavior is possible as well. So some people um, do your things like affirmations to just say some affirmations on a daily basis. I'm strong, I'm, I'm great, I'm courageous. You know, those affirmations, they help and change your, your thought pattern as well. So nutrition and self-image. So this is some of the things that are, are, are quite interesting as well when you start to, to discover that, hey, the, you know, the uh, um, astronomical benefits of using proper nutrition to combat mental health issues have only, I mean, recently come to the, to the forefront of, uh, of our, our, our awareness. It has been proven time and again that um, by improving the quality of the food we eat and the way we move our bodies, we can change our relationship with ourselves and ultimately improve our overall self image. So nutritional uh, neuroscience is, is, is an imaging uh, discipline that uh, studies the relationship between your diet and your what you call your cognitive um, activities, as well as an imbalance within this sphere. So it's, it's, it's these imbalances that can result in mental disorders and illnesses. And so by examining the foods we put into our body, we can properly observe the cognitive benefits. These are issues that uh, they bring with them as well. So figuring out what works for you is always is also essential. For example, maybe a vegan diet might suit your particular physical makeup and allow you to function to your highest potential. And for someone else, it might definitely won't work. So some of the best uh, so so some of the best advice I've ever received is that. Um, and this is to respect that learning to try to be different and continue following what works for you is the best way to properly figure out how to improve your life and happiness and self-image. So you might have to try several things several times as well to see what is the best food, what are the best things that, that, that um, some people actually keep a diary to say, hang on, what did I eat today? And how did I feel today? What did I eat today? How did I feel today? So you end up identifying the foods that are good for you as well. So, and also one thing you might look at as well, relationships and self-image. I think we've ever heard the saying, um, how can you love you, someone else if you don't love yourself? I know sometimes we could have loved it off and scoffed at it, but that's very important. Most people have... Sometimes it's the hardest thing to do to look at our own flaws and come to terms with how they are hindering our progress and happiness in life. Too often, the personal and self-image issues are, uh, get projected onto a loved one and end up causing toxic relationships to form. Most relationships rely on the flaws of one another person being unable or unwilling to face their own self-esteem uh, issues, resulting in them using their partner or friend or lover as a crunch to lean on and to support. So it becomes a bit unfair and imbalance in, uh, of energy um, that wouldn't be necessary. If the imbalance been part taken time to focus on their self-image issues, where they come uh, from and how you can combat uh, some of these challenges that let's say, you, you do have. So another way you can deal with the world is also visualization and meditation. Meditation is truly an amazing tool for anyone seeking to improve their self image and overall happiness. I can't stress enough on how helpful it can be for those who struggle with the eager to please and million thoughts a minute mentality that our fast paced culture is cultivated. And for those who struggle with mental health and anxiety issues, it can be life changing. Also meditation uh, helps us to gain clarity in our own mind. We become more aware of our, our minds at work and also more aware of what makes us feel good and also makes the thoughts race and what slows them down. So simple. Simply put, it's, it's a great way to get to know 
you. That little, uh, that uh, is, is a great way to know you, that little bit better. By knowing yourself and clearly seeing what you want, you can then begin to implement steps towards manifesting it. So even just being a little bit more open to experiencing and listening to yourself gives us a sense of strengthening and improve our self-image while meditation cultivates this open uh, mind. So for anyone still a little bit skeptical, I would encourage you just try it. Just try it and see what happens uh, uh, for you as well. So, and also one thing as well we need to do as well is um, when, when, when you judge another, you do not define them. You define yourself. This is an amazing quote by Wayne and Dyer. He said, uh, one fascinating aspect of a social science uh, behind self-image is, is the fact that when we communicate with others, we mirror our own insecurities in how we treat them. So for instance, if the first, in the first automatic thought of judgment you have on meeting someone new is, oh, she's too loud. Oh, the chances that uh, this judgment is something that you actually hold against yourself. You wish you could be maybe as loud and confident as this person. And the fact that you're not, uh, you're not is obvious, your own judgment of them. So sometimes we judge people um, against our own insecurities as well. Judgments are ways of shifting our attention from our own flaws and making the issue about the uh, anything else about somebody else. So we need to break uh, these cycles. So as we have already discussed and realizing some of your own negative and uh, um, unhelpful thought patterns is just the first step. So to actually break the cycle and help yourself get back to a mindset that's healthy, happy, and true to yourself, you must take action. This can come in many forms depending on the individuals and experiences and will uh, differ for everyone. So the main thing to be aware of here is that it doesn't have to be massive shift. Small changes in the right places can make just a big of a difference in the long term as huge ones in the moment. After, after first identifying your limiting beliefs, how then do you go about changing them? Well, therapists uh, such as uh, CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, are focused around this area of shifting thought patterns from the negative habits towards more positive and beneficial um, practices. But there are other ways too, such as keeping a journal, a diary or not, when you feel intense periods of self-doubt and negative self-image, uh, it helps uh, what you're dealing with seem that uh, a little bit more real. So then it becomes easier to combat. So how can you plan to break uh, this cycle? You know, being mindfulness of certain things that you do. So by being more mindful, we automatically shift from the state of living in the past to living in the now. So 90% of anxiety um, stems from uh, things that uh, have either already happened or that may or may not happen in the future. So by learning to accept the present moment and live in the now, live in the now, it becomes easier to accept ourselves and our flaws as they exist too. So this is key for anyone struggling to overcome a low self-image and also the techniques for mindfulness can extremely be transformative for them as well. So there are quite a number of articles you can also search and, and uh, find out uh, more as well about, um, about that as well. And one thing as well is being also body positivity. What I'm saying here is... Um, According to www.dosomething.org, approximately 91% of women are unhappy <laughs> with their bodies and resort to dieting to achieve their ideal body shape. This is crazy, yeah? When you look at it, 91%. Unfortunately, only 5% of women naturally possess the body type often portrayed by Western media or by the media. And up to 50% of uh, college um, college age girls, uh, you know, feel pressure to to be of a certain weight. 
all of this uh, dissatisfaction with body shapes, anxiety surrounding how to achieve the perfect figure results in all laws in self-image. Women perceive themselves outside of what is considered to be beautiful as they're being uh, presented with unrealistic images and unattainable weights. Only if they knew some of these people that how do they have this body? How do they look? How do they do all these things to look good on social media? I'm telling you, many people would love who they are right now. Just love who you are. This shifts the focus of their attention away from improving health and self-image and instead promotes an unhealthy ideal for them to strive for. So to, to help you get um, in touch with your body and start to define a relationship with a little clearer, I'd love you. Uh, I'd love if you could make at least 10 things about yourself and your body that you love and appreciate. Just start appreciating who you are. So take time. Go out there. Just write uh, your, 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 your certain um, things that you do love about your body, how you look and everything. Just love it. Just love your body. Don't look for the six pack or anything. Just love who you are. And you don't realize some of the people, how they dress, what they put inside for them to strap their tummies to have that uh, only if you could strip them and you start realizing how they totally look, I don't think you'll waste your time trying to be somebody else. Be yourself. So I like uh, this statement, these six pillars of self-esteem. Uh, you know, apart from disturbances, so I just want to read this quote to you. Apart from disturbance whose roots are biological, I cannot think of a single psychological problem from anxiety and depression to underachievement at school or at work, to fear of intimacy, happiness, or success, to alcohol or drug abuse, to spouse buttering or child molestation, to, to continence and sexual disorders, to passivity and chronic aimlessness, to suicide and crimes of violence that is not traceable, at least in part, to the problem of deficient in self-esteem, all of these judgments we pass in life, none is as important as the one we pass on ourselves. This is a quote from the book uh, by Nathaniel Brandon, The Six Pillars of Self-Esteem. So I really recommend uh, this to anyone interested in maybe doing some research as well and finding out more. He's done quite a lot of research on how many people get affected by, by their self-esteem uh, as well. Right, other things you can do as well is maybe yoga and um, your self-image as well. So this helps you to connect with the inner self, inner you as well. So you can do this as well to improve and uh, help you to start feeling a bit better about yourself. So how are you feeling? I know that uh, what I just said, maybe a lot of information with you and there's probably one over two emotions surfacing right now. Maybe I, there's excitement, maybe you're overwhelmed or both emotions are great. Your excitement will drive you and your overwhelm will force you to take this process of improving self-image very seriously. So by cultivating mindful awareness of ourselves, the world around us, we can begin to feel a little bit more at easy with our bodies and gradually begin to improve our self-image. It's not an easy road, but persistence and repeated action. I promise you, it is possible to change the way you view yourself. How are you feeling? If you'd like to share, you can post on how you're feeling and how things are going on uh, for you as well. So I just wanna thank you for being uh, on this on this section as well. And, um, I really enjoyed maybe our time together and uh, have maybe a number of, um, if you have a number of questions that you might have, feel free to jot and let us know. And also if you can type in maybe what is your number one takeaway from uh, this as well. And if you feel like you need uh, support on this journey, I'm more than happy to help you make yourself a priority once more in a while. It's not selfish, it's necessary. So make yourself a priority once in a while. It's not selfish. It's necessary for you to be able to do uh, that as well in your life. So thank you so much for being part of this call. 
You can also visit our website, www.henrymoyo.net. There's so much content that we have there that we're putting up there to just help a lot of people to go through and to help them become better versions of themselves. So these are things that this we're doing as a community service to help you and share as much information. The information that we do share has been of great value and it has personally transformed my life. And I realized that I might not be the only one walking this journey. There could be somebody else who has been there. So if this has been of great value to you, I'll encourage you just share it to somebody else and it's going to help somebody change their lives. Thank you so much for being part of this call. We truly appreciate you being uh, on this call. Have a great evening. God bless you.